Those who are able, quickly stand for the call to worship. Again and again, the Psalms call us together to praise the Holy One. Let the sun and the moon and all the shining stars praise this amazing God. Let God be praised by every ruler and every people. Energized and weary by days just past, we gather in your recreative love, O oh God, to rest and refocus. Open our lives to amazement. Open our imaginations to possibility. Open our souls to healing presence. You in us and we in each other. Amen. Let us, let us affirm our faith together as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead. Today's Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10, through chapter 62, verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, 
For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord will create righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings of your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the head of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. And the New Testament is Galatians 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah 6, 9. Our gospel lesson is taken today from Luke 2, verses 22 through 40. Hear the word of our Lord. The time came for Joseph and Mary to perform the ceremony of purification, so as the law of Moses commanded. So they took the child to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be dedicated to the Lord, they also went to offer a sacrifice of a pair of doves or two young pigeons, as was required by the law of the Lord. At that same time, there was a man named Simeon living in Jerusalem. He was good, God-fearing man, and was waiting for Israel to be saved. The Holy Spirit was with him and had assured him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's promised Messiah. Led by the Spirit, Simeon went into the temple when the parents brought the child Jesus into the temple to do for him what the law had required. Simeon took the child in his arms and gave thanks to God. Now, Lord, said Simeon, you have kept your promise and you may let your servant go in peace. With my own eyes I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples and a light to reveal your will to the Gentiles and bring your glory to the people of Israel. Now the child's father and mother were amazed at the things that Simeon said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign from God which many people will speak against and so reveal their secret thoughts. And sorrow, like a sharp sword, will break your own heart. There was a very old prophet, prophetess, a widow named Anna, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She had been married for only seven years and was now 84 years old. She never left the temple. Day and night she worshipped God, fasting and praying that this very same hour she arrived and gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were waiting for God to set Jerusalem free. Thus ends the word of the Lord.
The peace of God be with you. As Carol said, a number of our family members were not able to be present because of the influenza. So it only seems right today that instead of extending the hand of fellowship, let's just wave at each other and, <laughs> and, and you know, in, invite each other into this worship together. Hi. Now, you, you may want to come down here a little closer so you can see, plus I have some things to give you, so you'll want to be fairly close so you can get those. And let's get the, well, first of all, when you were here last Sunday, Reverend Bray talked about what? What was coming up? What special day? Christmas was, right? And we talked, he had the candy canes, you know, and he gave all those out, I don't have candy canes today. However... What special day is coming up now in a, in a few days? Yeah. The New Year. Yeah, New Year's Eve and then the New Year. Well, we just happen to have, because you can't have the New Year without a party, so we have some party hats. Everybody gets a party hat. Well, here's a blue one, because, you know, that way we don't have just what color you want. Blue. And here, take a party hat. And there's more. Because we're going to have some friends help us to celebrate the party here. Today is? Should we sing happy birthday? <laughs> oh, it's not. <laughs> well. <laughs> Everybody get a part. Now, i got to put them on. Oh, i got to put mine on. All right. I don't know how this is going to go. Did I... Okay, get your party hats on. Party hat. Oh, Mason, you lost your party hat. But you can't have a party with just hats. We've got to have noisemakers, too. Yes. So, here's some noisemakers. Do we 
I don't know if we'll have enough. We'll see. You got one? Here, pass these out. See if there's enough for everybody. Right, or, there you go, Addy, give one. Pass one down. Mason probably doesn't need a noisemaker unless we got enough. You ladies have noisemakers and gentlemen down there? Because if it's your birthday, we've got to have noisemakers. <laughs> All right, everybody get a noisemaker? Did we have enough? All right, now, here's what you have to do. In a little bit, I have some friends that are coming to help us talk a little bit about this party that's coming up. And every time you hear the words New Year, we're going to have to blow our noisemakers. Noise Shall we try it? So if, I'm, if the friends are talking and they're going blah, 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 and they say, New Year... That was pretty weak, wasn't it? <laughs> let's, let's practice one more time. Every time our friends say, New Year, now we're getting it. Do you have a defective noisemaker? Do you? You do? We'll give that one to Bob. <laughs> Are there any extras? Oh, here, try one of these. I don't want to back. <laughs> try one of that. Try that. And blow hard. Must be the green ones. Here, try a blue one. Holy cow. Oh, there we go. All right, so remember, you have to help me every time we hear the word, words, New Year. Excellent. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I have some friends here that came with us. Oh, hey, Mason, looky, looky, looky. I know, I know. You haven't even heard Grandpa's sermon yet. <laughs> I felt the same way. All righty. <clears throat> you ready? Oh, well. <clears throat> hey, buddy Bert. Hey, Bert. Guess what's coming up in just a couple days? Well, by the taste of that lasagna that you made the other night, it keeps coming up. <laughs> no, Bert. I'm speaking of the new year. I, I said I'm speaking of the new year. New year. What's wrong with the old one? And, and why are we wearing all these stupid hats? Oh, Bert, Bert, nothing's wrong with the old one. You know, the old new year. Oops. <laughs> the old new year, it's, it's just fine. But it's time. That's okay. It's time to celebrate a new year. Ah, <laughs> oh, those confounded noisemakers, but, but I just got used to the old one. Why change? Well, Bert, Bert, we don't change. The calendar changes. So if nothing changes, why do we even bother? <laughs> oh, buddy Bert, you're missing the point. The calendar changes, and we usher in a new year. And it's 2015 with, with parties and anticipation and wonder. But I, I, I like the old one. I like the old one, Ernie. I don't like parties and I don't like noise. I do wonder, though. Really, Bert? Now you're getting it? Are you filled with wonder? Yep. I'm filled with wondering why all this fuss and why the old year wasn't just fine as it was. Oh, Bert, you're, you're going to love it. I know you will. I'm not going to love it. I don't, I don't want no new year. I don't want any of that confounded blowing either. I, I don't know why they keep blowing. Oh, Bert, they keep blowing because they're happy for the new year. <laughs> Would you stop saying that? Oh, buddy, Bert, come on. It's okay. It'll be all right. <laughs> well... Ernie, was he excited about the upcoming celebration? <laughs> was Ernie? Ernie. Ernie is this one. Was Ernie excited? He was. How about Bert? Was Bert excited? No, Bert wasn't very excited about the new year. About the new year. <laughs> but you know what? That... <laughs> 
That, that, that gives us an exciting time. New adventures. Do you like adventures? Sure we do. We all like adventures. And so it gives us new adventures. It gets us exciting times. And you know what? It doesn't matter if it's the old year or if the new year. Now ah, you're cooking. It doesn't matter because Jesus is always with us. And Jesus fills our hearts with that excitement and wanting to celebrate him being with us and his loving us and his always protecting us. So it doesn't matter if it's this past year of 2014 or if it's the new year of 2015. Jesus is always going to be with us. He's always loving us. He's always there to protect us. And he's always there for us to rely on. Okay? Would you pray with me, please? Repeat after me. Dear God, we are so thankful that you have Jesus in our hearts to protect us, to be with us, and to always love us. Help us in the days to come to praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, you can keep the party hats and the horns, all right? And I don't think in my sermon I have New Year, so I think we'll be, we'll be good. New Year. Just one, two, one more time. Thanks for coming up. Thanks for me. I have to tell you that if it isn't intimidating enough that I have two pastors sitting in the congregation with Jeanette and with my brother Randy, then I have Ed staring at me here in the pulpit. Oh well. I guess it's no worse than standing up in front of my staff at school and, you know, talking with them, so we will persevere. Oh wait, that was a different message. <clears throat> As I was researching and looking at the gospel lesson today, I came upon a kind of a tongue-in-cheek uh, piece that, that referenced the Magi, and that jumped out at me because um, our church where Carol and I you know, spent about the first 30 years of our marriage and where all of our kids grew up in. Um, the first Sunday after Christmas, in the choir, we always sang the Magi. That was just a, I don't know, I think forever, it seems like, we sang that song. And I think our choir director, the only reason she didn't like it is because the men were like 70% of the singing. The women had just very little part in that, in, that, uh, in that song. But as I thought about that, <clears throat> and then as I read this piece, it talked about the Magi, the three kings. Only it gave it a different spin, and it said, if th what if they were three women? And how different that may have been. Because had it not been three kings but three women... Well, first of all, they would have asked for directions. Secondly, they would have brought appropriate gifts for the baby. They would have arrived on time, so much so that they would have helped deliver the baby Jesus. 
probably all of those are very true. But I want to talk about standing in grateful wonder. So picture this, an old man with a baby in his arms. He stands chuckling, laughing, I mean giddy with joy. Or perhaps he simply gazes with streams of tears pouring down his face. He realizes that he is standing in grateful wonder. Now, either way, he's the happiest that he's ever been. And then he says, he has seen enough, he is ready to die. He has seen salvation, and now he can depart in peace. So what has he really seen? I mean, after all, he's simply holding a little child in his arms, a powerless infant. Well, whatever grand works that are in store for this baby, it's still only a promise of hope. Nothing's happened yet. Herod still sits on the throne. Caesar, still, he still governs from afar. The world looks as it did before. Simeon sees it. In, 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 that, in that gospel lesson, it, it talks, I mean, Simeon sees it. He stands there in grateful wonder. Now, perhaps for Simeon, it is likely, and I mean, it, it is obviously the very best time of his life. This is a special time for him. God has revealed to him what he was waiting for his whole life. It's the future that he holds in his hand as he holds and cradles that infant. He has seen it. He has touched it. Simeon is satisfied. Well, then there's Anna. It talks about Anna in, <clears throat> in Isaiah. She's also old and approaching the end of her days. She also adds her own joy and praise to the moment. She, she'll be telling everyone who will listen about this baby whom she saw for just a few minutes. By the time a young Jesus is teaching and performing miracles, Simeon and Anna are long gone. Actually, so, much, so will most of the shepherds who came to see that child in the manger, and some, if not all, of the Magi. They're gone also by the time Jesus is teaching and telling the stories that he tells. We'll come back to Simeon and Anna in just a little bit. Now, last Sunday, Reverend Bray spoke of the shepherds, talked about the shepherds. And they, too, were standing in grateful wonder as they experienced the angels telling them of Jesus' birth. Think about the faith that they had. I mean, they left their flocks and they went to see this infant king. <clears throat> Similarly, here are the magi. They're, they're, they're royalty, they're kings of sorts. They're in other lands when they see this star. And they were moved to follow that star. They also stood in grateful wonder. Or as the case might be, maybe they sat on their camels in grateful wonder. In the meantime, they who saw the baby knelt at the stable or laid their tributes before him, and they did so, they did so out of adoration and out of faith. They would only know that they had seen and heard, or they would only know what they had seen and they had heard. They lived out those words of the hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful, which says, O come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Now I have to admit, I'm in awe of the shepherds, and I'm in awe of the wise men and their act of faith. I don't know about you, but I have found that when I least expect it in my life, 
an act of faith tends to take me off guard. An example of that. I have a very good friend whose name is Ed. He's a part-time pastor of this little church just across the Indiana border. And he's probably one of, if not the most giving person I have ever been around. Or had the good fortune to be around. When he's not pastoring, he has a construction business. Kind of keeps the finances going. But as such, without hesitation, over and over and over, I have witnessed him reaching out taking off to help someone. Be it a furnace that's malfunctioning, a door that's broken, a roof in need of repair, or loaning his van to a family, right now, to a family that's without transportation. He doesn't ask anything in return. He does so from his heart. Last summer I had the good fortune of accompanying him and another friend of ours down to... Corbin, or near Corbin, Kentucky. We went down for a little over a day. We drove out in the boonies, and boy, I do mean out into the boonies. It was kind of, you, you, you wondered, where in the world are we? Pulled up into a mobile home, driveway of a mobile home of an elderly couple. Except as I think about it, they were probably close to my age, so I don't know what that says. I do know what that says. But this elderly couple had a major issue with their back door. Ed knew this ahead of time. He had actually been there before. But Lynn and I had never been there. And we walk around to the back of the mobile home. And what we find is the mobile home, this, this door was, they couldn't even open the door anymore without it falling out. And then... Until we arrived, they had four-legged visitors nightly in and out of the mobile home because of this huge hole in the floor just inside the door. So we ended up replacing the floor. We replaced the door. We re actually, first, before we replaced the door, we tore out and rebuilt the whole frame around the door, replaced the door, resided the area around that. It looked awesome. The couple was so grateful. I mean, they stood in grateful wonder as we worked. Now, this couple didn't have two pennies to run, rub together. But they fixed this huge meal for us. Despite their financial woes due to the husband having a terminal illness, they fixed this big meal as a way to say thank you. It was pretty awe-inspiring, I have to tell you. You see, Ed never flinched at reaching out to help them, never once. We never talked about who's going to pay for what, because Lynn and I both knew that everything came out of Ed's pocket. The gratitude and the graciousness that I witnessed, it was so genuine. And I felt very fortunate to have been a part of helping, but even more so of witnessing this act of Christian love, both to and from, you know, from Ed to this family and from this family back to us. I stood in grateful wonder. I was amazed. <clears throat> Another moment that caught me off guard it just happened a week ago yesterday. Carol and I were in Columbus and we were having lunch with the twins. They're always called the twins. It's actually Amanda and Elizabeth, but they're always just the twins. So we were having lunch, and Carol was sharing with them about the upcoming Christmas cantata and how excited she was to participate in that. And she talked about one of the songs and how it spoke to her. Word of God speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty. To be still and know that, in, that you're in this place, please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. As I listened to her, I found myself in grateful wonder 
as she shared her faith from her heart. Unknowingly at that time, she shared expect it. It catches me off guard and I stand in grateful wonder. Only this time as the offertory was concluding, I was wondering and then watch these ladies sprint from the balcony with the offertory play. It's that commercialism that tends to wear us down. And in doing so, how often we end up forgetting just what that true meaning of Christmas is. Now there's a cartoon of Dennis the Menace and it shows Dennis, and it may be summing it up the best, it shows him sitting amongst a pile of open gifts at Christmas morning. And Dennis asks, is this all? It's a huge pile. Is this all Christmas is? Is it opened gifts for which the children play with the toys on Christmas Day? And then they play in the boxes for which they came the day after. Is this all? Simeon helps us to understand this is not all. The moment that Simeon had waited for, had prayed for, had looked for, had arrived. He held that infant Jesus in his hands. For Simeon, this was all he needed. He could die now. He was fulfilled. He said, Master, you, now you are dismissing your servant in peace. According to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. He had seen it. Another example of seeing it, Harriet Tubman, as the story goes, was known to wait in train stations without the aid of a train schedule or even knowing when the train was coming. Now, people would ask, why, sh why are you doing that? And she simply replied, because she knew the train was coming. She knew the train was coming. In our lives today, filled with GPS and PDAs and an overload of information, living in a society of people where we want to know what's ahead, this sounds pretty strange to us that Harriet Tubman would just reply, because I'm here because I know the train is coming. However, what does it mean to wait without a schedule but be certain that the train is coming? Could it be that she knew that the station was the place to be when waiting for coming trains? Might it have been that Tubman recognized that the track had already been laid outside the station for what was to come. And if that's true, then likewise, Simeon and Anna were stationed in the very place, the temple, where awaited the grateful wonder of the boy Jesus, for whom he was and is the Messiah. Imagine Mary and Joseph's reaction as they saw and heard this. I mean, really, as parents, we all think our kids are special. But to be told that the, he is the Messiah, the Chosen One, the Son of God, the King of Kings, imagine Mary and Joseph's reaction. The text says they were amazed. I'm confident they also stood in grateful wonder. So how about us? Do we hear what they heard? Do we see what they saw? History records that Handel was so impacted by what they saw in the Word that he penned the Messiah, the cantata of the Messiah, and including the Hallelujah Chorus. Stood in grateful wonder. What do we see in here? I mean, really, these are uncertain times when we think about it. They're even scary times. As we sit on the brink of a new year, they all left <laughs> or aren't paying attention. As we sit on that brink of that new year, even if we listen, I mean, if we listen to the media, we can become overburdened with negativity. 
even despair. I mean, think about it. That's all the, all the media want to do is sell airtime or sell newspapers or sell print. And so they, tell, they, they put all of the stuff that they think will catch our attention. And typically it's all negative, or most of it. There is so much work to be done, so many to reach out to, so few resources. It weighs on us. There are even likely those who scratch their heads and wonder what we are doing. I mean, what the heck are we doing? Where are we going? But these are hopeful times too. If we pay attention, if we pay attention, the tracks have been laid. We have glimpsed the promises of God. We are challenged to look beyond the uncertainties, the fears, the criticisms. And we're challenged to continue our journey with our eyes, our souls, our hearts, and our minds fixed on Jesus and the example that he set for us in his own life. Simeon looked beyond the child Jesus as a baby. He looked beyond that. He saw the Christ. He saw the promised one. Our challenge is to see the potential in each other as a gift of God and how that gift plays a role within God's promises in our daily lives. Simeon and Anna stood in grateful wonder in the presence of Jesus. So how do each of us stand? Is it in amazement? Do we stand in amazement? Do we stand or sit in contentment? Are we confused? Or are we prepared to stand in grateful wonder in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Would you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, we come to you today opening our hearts, searching and yearning to stand in grateful wonder in your presence. We feel the gratitude and the love of, for all the things that you have given us, for all the things you have blessed us with, and for all the things that are yet to come. We so appreciate and tend to take for granted things like our health, things that happen in our daily lives. But when we stop and stand in wonder, we realize that these are all precious gifts from you as well. Please help, help us to see in the days to come all of those, all the amazement, all the wonder that you have given us and that you have before us. Help us feel your loving arms wrapped around each of us that we might look in amazement, look in splendor instead of getting caught up in despair. Guide and direct us, lead us so that we might do the work that you're asking us to do. Bless each and every one of us here in this house today. Watch over us, care for us, be with us. All these things we ask in your name we pray. As we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The offertory, as we are reminded many, many times over, is an opportunity for each of us to share the blessings that we have been given in our own lives. The blessings of money, the blessings of talent, to share those with others so that they might benefit those that are less fortunate. Give with your hearts as we share with others. God, please accept these gifts so that they may be used to further the work that you have asked us to do. Reaching out to help others, reaching out to be the people of God that we know you want us to be. Please accept these gifts. Bless them to your use. All these things we ask in your name. Amen.
As I said in the message, sometimes when you least expect it, it catches me off guard and I stand in grateful wonder. Only this time, as the offertory was concluding, I was wondering, and then watch these ladies sprint from the balcony with the offertory plates to get down here in time. <clears throat> Thank goodness no one tripped or fell. In the days to come, ask yourself, what is it that you stand in grateful wonder of? I mean, if you think about it, God has given us everything we see. I, I think about on, not as often as I'd like, but on Sunday afternoons, I go back to the woods to, on our parents' farm, and I sit in one of the tree stands that, that the local hunters have put up, and I look out, and whether it's the flock of turkeys going across the field, or the birds singing, or just the stillness, I'm in wonder, in, in that awe of all Allness, or something like that. I mean, it, when I sit there, and, when I sit there, and there isn't even a sound, it's deafening. It's that grateful wonder of all that God has given us. Pause and take note of that in your lives. It's a hustle bustle life that we live. We're constantly hurrying from one place to another. I'll bet at least one of you have checked your watches to see if I went over. <laughs> because we want to beat the Methodist to the, you know, to the, to the, the diner or wherever it is that we're going for lunch. We're always hurrying. Pause, soak in what God has given us in that grateful wonder. And also celebrate the fact that in a few days we're ushering in a new year. Oh, come on. Thank you. <laughs> I knew I could count on you. I came across a hymn that I think says it best. And it's, another year is dawning. And I'll just share the first uh, verse. Another year is dawning, dear Father, let it be, in working or in waiting, another year with thee. Another year of progress, another year of praise, another year of proving thy presence in all days. Celebrate his presence. Take time to look. Take time to reach out. Take time to experience that grateful wonder. Are you ready? And Happy New Year. <laughs> God's joy and blessing be upon each one of us as we depart this house together. May God's joy not only be on, upon you, but his safe hands be surround you in the days and the weeks to come. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.